bringing the people behind our food to life. I graduated from college in the early 70s when people were thinking about the world needing to go a different direction and, and people needing to get back to the land and learn to, to live in harmony with nature and to learning to live uh, with uh, ideals that were more about humanity than about profit. Somebody needed to farm. That's the connection with the land and it's the connection with with what people need and developing a, a human social order based on, on that harmonious food production was, was the, the only vision that I could see that made sense. The store that we use kind of as a, as a house and a, a connection to the community around us was built in 1913. There were five families that made their living by working through the store. They bought and sold wool. There were even stories about bootleg during Prohibition, but some deny and some say it's true. They sold ice cream cones and hardware and clothing and red wing shoes. They had dances. Tea was abandoned for uh, five years before I found it. And it, I was actually at that time looking for land where I could build a wood shop because I was making furniture and growing vegetables in the summer. Earthen Bat Path Organic Farm uh, is named because that's what it was for me. It was an earthen path towards what, what I um, believed was important to strive for, for, for all humanity, you know, a, an earthen path where we're connected to the earth and we live within the circle of life, within um, the, the cycles of nature, um, ecologically, sustainably. So Earthen Path Organic Farm has been an attempt to take the small piece of land that I have and um, raise a family on them, on that, teaching them how to live uh, from their labor, from their creativity with the resources on that land. Gus, can you come on over and help? We're just going to clean out that front pen and put down some fresh straw. And, uh, Take a look. So we're going to clean out this front pen. All right. Come on, out you go. Out of the box. We have lots of animals. I love animals. Um, we have chickens. We sell eggs. Meat chickens, too. In the fall, we raise up a batch or two of uh, broilers to sell. Turkeys, ducks, geese, horses. We, I have farmed with horses uh, for probably about 27 or 28 years now. I can't remember exactly what year it was I got my first team. The reason I've been doing it has been um, to pass on. You know, not just the knowledge, but and the skills, but to pass on what we build. You know, most of the farms around, the good old farms with the real barns and, and everything, were the work of several generations. Somebody homesteading the land and each generation adding to it and building to it. And to me, you can't have a sustainable model without thinking about the people on the land as well. Passing on the skills in the land and, and into the future generations. So I'm really happy that after um, going out and managing a farm in New York, uh, my son Joe and Rebecca are back. 
And I'm hoping that eventually um, several of my other children will be here um, participating as well. And, I, and all my life as I was raising kids, um, I've done it with the intent of having something for space for everybody. We don't have enough land, so one of the thoughts with the greenhouse was there's enough here, um, enough greenhouse businesses to support several families. There's a space in this little piece of land to support several generations, and you know I would love to rock the grandkids on the porch and and watch and consult. <laughs>